means in the uh, single market. Well, here to talk about that, I'm joined by two MPs. They are the Conservative Kwasi Kwarteng uh, and uh, Labour's uh, Stephen Kinnock. Welcome to Hello. you both. Well, what do you think of that argument? I mean, she's got the statistics there. She sure. says staying in the single market be worth about £1,600. There's, there's pounds nothing ahead. that she said on the screen that I haven't heard 18 months ago. We had a huge debate. We had four months ahead of the referendum when all the politicians, yourselves, the journalists, were talking about Brexit. We had the Treasury forecast. We had the George Osborne so-called punishment budget. We had all of that. And the country decided 52-48 to leave the EU. Not now, nothing, London, now nothing that she said uh, just now in any way adds anything new to uh, that debate. And in fact, I think it's incredibly negative. I think she can't look forward. And actually, if you look at her results last year in the general election, her party performed worse than any other party in the UK. So I think she's got her own uh, issues to, to look, well, look to. And, uh, still got more MPs in Scotland than anybody else. Well, she lost 21 MPs. She lost more than a third of their MPs, which was a disaster yeah. compared to any other party. There's nothing, uh, no question that we're leaving the EU. It's not about whether or not we leave, it's about how we leave. Uh, we had a relatively narrow referendum result and followed up by a general election. I think the mandate from both of those is for uh, the softest possible Brexit, a Brexit that doesn't wreck the British economy. And it's perfectly possible to move into the European economic area and the European uh, free trade area uh, in a way that uh, does a lot to take back control. Which I mean, yeah, I mean you, you, you agree with Nicola that the UK ought to stay in uh, the single market and the currency union? I, I've been saying for over a year that we should move into the European economic area. What, one thing I think is actually important, it might be, seem a bit nuanced, but um, the European economic area is not the same as full membership of the single market. The most important difference being Articles 112 and 113 of the EEA agreement, which enable a country to unilaterally pull the emergency brake on free movement of labour and to set up a new system uh, in its place. And I think the EEA is a really important distinction from the single market. I'm very much hoping that the leadership of both uh, of the main parties in Parliament will come to understand that very important difference. And I think it's a really good way forward for our country to reunite our deeply divided country. Well, look, country. I don't know what Stephen's motivations are. I mean, clearly there's a group of people in his party, other well, probably, parties... Well, you probably both want, want the best for no, the country. No, of course we do, but, but a, lot your, of people want, a lot of people want to stay in the EU. They genuinely believe that leaving the EU was a disaster for this country. Now, I listened to those people in 2016. They said we would lose 500,000 jobs. They said there would be an immediate recession no, we in 2016. Left Nothing happened. We Nothing haven't, happened. We haven't, we haven't, we haven't left, left yet. To be, to be fair to uh, George Osborne and the, his team, there was an emergency budget. That budget was for 2016. It wasn't for when we left. It was, was there was an immediate impact yeah, assessment, that, that was which, yeah. was category wrong, which was completely wrong. Which was which is forgive me. I mean, I didn't realise you were on his side. No, I'm not but, on his side. But, but what I want to say, what I want to say, is that um, we're going to leave, as you say. And I think that what yeah. Brexiteers want, what people want, is to have uh, yeah. sovereignty over freedom of movement. We want to get our money back. We want to control the money, and it's very yeah. uh, likely that we will do that. And we also want to control no. our laws. Now, any situation in which uh, the ECJ has has uh, jurisdiction over and above uh, our parliamentary sovereignty, which, something which, have on the which is something which will be resisted. Oh, now, no. we don't know what the terms of the deal will be, but and I know that Stephen's uh, motives are good, but there are some people who want to drag us back yeah. by hook or crook into the but, EU, but and that isn't an I know, you, I know it's not the outcome that you, you desire, but in your view, would being in the European economic area be compatible with leaving the EU? I don't see, I don't see how it is, because you've got uh, ju jurisdiction of the ECJ. You're essentially no, a rule taker. It's the FDR. You're, you're, Can I just... You're, you're just one point of clarification. Sorry. I'll let you finish then, Cosby. <laughs> Sorry. The, uh, the jurisdiction of the EEA, uh, the court that has jurisdiction, is the EFTA Arbitration Court. They do take some of their steer from the European Court of Justice, but there's actually significant divergence between the EFTA Arbitration Court and the ECJ. So there's some really important okay. distinctions between full EU membership and membership of the e, uh, EEA. Well, what I would say about this is that I think you're looking at it from the wrong end of the telescope, if you like. Your base assumption is that the EU, EU membership is ideal. And somehow, if we're not in the EU, we've got to try and replicate that as, as closely as possible. I reject that. I think there are many more opportunities uh, in the global economy. I think I look at Europe, and even though uh, the stock market is doing well there at the moment, uh, this is not the, the engine of global growth. 
but there I, are markets actually, all over the world which we can engage with, and I fear that uh, the proposal that you suggest will actually restrict our ability to do deals uh, outside the e no, EU. No, because and um, membership of EFTA also enables you to do bilateral trade deals with third countries. Iceland has a bilateral trade deal with China. So it actually gives you a lot more flexibility. I've always believed that the one-size-fits-all yeah. approach of the EU has not been the right one. Your problem, though, is that, as I understand mm. it, your leader, Jeremy Corbyn, is quite explicit. He said Britain is leaving the EU, and leaving the EU means we can't be in the single market and, and the currency. And he said that. You can leave the EU, go into the EEA. You're not then fully part of the single market, thus complying with the various red Maybe lines that are out there. That's not what he means, though, is it? That's not what he told Labour MPs. I, I think there's a really important nuanced argument. We've got a very short window of opportunity now before we get the meaningful vote in October. We need to have a better public debate about what the options are. I'm like a broken record on this. I've been talking for well over a year about the advantages sure. of the EEA and EFTA. Yeah. It does give you more flexibility, both in terms of... Because uh, yeah. EFTA is not customs union. No, but my so, point is, unless the Labour Party shifts its position, that meaningful vote is clearly going to go the way of uh, what the government That's proposes, right. There's a it? huge opportunity for the Labour Party to take this position. I think there are plenty of Conservative MPs who do not wish to see the wrecking of the British economy as we leave the EU. I think there's a strong but parliamentary, cross-party parliamentary see, majority where that could Stephen change I, the game in British politics. This is where Stephen and I differ. He fundamentally believes, and nothing will change his mind, that leaving the EU was a disaster, was a bad move for Britain. I actually think yeah. it was but a good I, move. But I accept I actually and respect the referendum. As we go into the 20 no, but, but, no, but you're, you're disappointed. You are absolutely. I totally understand that. I think I think the opposite. Yeah. I think that the 2020s yeah. and the 2030s, we will have far more opportunities outside. But the do, EU do you not than, think than that even if them. one looks at the trajectory of uh, the government, yeah. that we have moved from a gung-ho idea of a hard Brexit and be good for Britain, we are moving back towards a softer. Brexit, no, I don't. I don't uh, agree with that at all. I think what's happened is that after the initial vote, uh, we've actually got a government who ha which has a mandate to deliver on the vote. And of course, so you, any, you don't, you it, don't was, so. it was, it was yeah. pretty obvious that leaving the yeah. EU, I mean, I speak to constituents, so, and they were saying, how long is this going to take? Can, and I said, this is before the vote, two to four yeah. years. And they accepted that. They accepted the fact that we were in the EU for 46 years. Yeah. And given that, you know, it's a divorce, right. it will take, sure. we're not going to be able can to do I, that immediately. Can I ask you a hypothetical? If yeah, sure. Stephen Kinnock were to prevail, and yes. the deal were to be to stay in the European European economic area, would you vote for that or against that? I have to look at what the, the terms of the deal are, because as he said, there's not going to be an off-the-shelf deal. It'll be a bespoke deal. There'll be details in that deal, which we'll have to look at at the time. So you, you could go either way? Well, I, I, you can't tell me, you can't ask me in six months ahead of what's going to happen, how I'm going to vote. I don't know what I, the details will be. I, I think we just not need to start framing the argument now. We need a clear position from the Labour Party that we need a, a Brexit based on EEA EFTA. A Canada do you think deal, you're get that? A Canada deal is just not good enough because a Canada based deal yeah. doesn't cover do you services. Think you're get that? 80% of do you, the British economy do you think is in the services. Labour Party is going to change its position. I really hope so. I will be doing my uh, damnedest to make that argument to our front bench and to our leadership and I really hope that when we come that that meaningful vote in October will be the most important right. vote in parliament in living memory arguably and I think we've got to have the right position yeah. there because the future of our country and future generations depends on it. I'm not even sure so, we're guaranteed a meaningful vote well, in I, October I, I, but anyway we, we, we well, will have to leave it course, there. Okay. Thank you very Thank much you. indeed. Thank you. This is All Out Politics coming up next.